So I have three things to show you. One of which is the Back for Blood roadmap. The second is the November 2021 update, which, oh boy. And then third <laughs> is Reddit. Being extremely, extremely, extremely upset with the contents of the November update that was in the roadmap. Okay? So the main point of this video is going to be talking about the November update and how to get the best out of it. Because a lot of people are freaking out. They don't know how to play the game anymore. They felt like everything they had was taken from them. So what I'm going to do for you is try to help make that a little bit easier to deal with. Okay? Real quick, let's just talk about the roadmap because I was gone the past couple of days and I didn't get a chance to. What's going on? November, big patch. Already happened. Happened yesterday. December is going to be new supply lines, new campaign progression stuff with solo campaigns, new card types, and all new cards. So that's pretty cool. It's going to be free. 2022 also is going to have free updates, including new difficulties, which I don't know if that is going to mean kind of the nightmare. New player cards, new corruption cards, a new co-op mode, melee updates, which to me, looking at the other side of the screen, I got an idea for that one, and then quality of life improvements. Looking at the other side of the screen is going to be the paid stuff that you get if you were a deluxe or ultimate edition member, or you can just buy the annual pass. It's going to be paid updates. Pretty normal for games nowadays. And the first one is going to include the expansion one called Tunnels of Terror, and I would not be surprised if this is just like the tunnel that was left over from the Abomination, <laughs> or something that he'd been like crawling through underneath the map and then for other new stuff there's going to be new cleaners which if i take a look here i wouldn't be surprised if these silhouettes here are the new cleaners i also see two bats crossing which wouldn't surprise me if they do dual wielding melee weapons or just a complete change to the melee system in general based off what we saw on the other side of the screen and then i'm also seeing this right here which to me looks a lot like dead by daylight so i wouldn't be surprised if they're working on something with dead by daylight and who knows what else is going on here. Maybe they'll have like a jockey or something come back and grab people on the head. We'll see. We kind of already have the stalker though. So this is the roadmap. I just wanted to touch on it because a bunch of cool stuff is coming and I'm excited about it. But now let's talk about the November update and what's going on. <laughs> so if you took a look at Reddit recently, everybody's really upset. <sighs> to be clear, that's pretty normal for Reddit to be upset about things so if you enjoy the game i wouldn't go over there because it's going to make you enjoy the game less typically that's just the standard reddit experience not just back for blood back for blood reddit right now currently has a bunch of people complaining it has a bunch of people making really good points and it has a bunch of people in the middle and what i'm going to try to do for you today is make it easier to deal with okay so what's going on what all happened why are people upset the big things that have happened i have in game and i'll show them to you so the biggest thing is that they changed a bunch of the cards and I have each one of the cards here that they changed <laughs> and it looks like they changed 12 of them didn't they so if we take a look here batter up now does less damage it was 50% before and now it is only 40% and I actually have a list of things right here to make it so I can read them to you very easily and now on to brazen here I honestly I think brazen and meth head got hurt the worst but brazen now does less efficient hits before this was 30 percent now it reads 20 percent melee stamina efficiency meaning you're not gonna be able to swing as many swings they also changed breakout here and instead of it taking four seconds to break out it now only takes three so if i'm reading this correctly that actually looks like a buff one thing that they changed and this is going to be a bigger conversation a little bit later but one thing they changed is a lot of stuff with temporary health including this card here hey someone followed called face your fears this used to give you three temporary health anytime you got a kill within two meters now it's only two they changed fresh bandage to make it so that it heals trauma damage at the start of the level i guess it wasn't doing that properly before they made it so ignore the pain it now heals you rather than giving you temporary health which sucks <laughs> they changed inspiring sacrifice to do less healing i think it was 25 before now it's only 20 they made it so mean drunk only provides 60 percent melee damage where before it was doing 75 percent they nerfed Meth Head, similar to how they nerfed Brazen, and now it's only 30% stamina efficiency instead of 40. They nerfed Money Grubbers, which, oof, that's gonna, that's a kick in the balls. But, Money Grubbers was a little ridiculous, so I get it. Money Grubbers was a little over the top. It felt like you pick Money Grubbers and you don't gotta worry about any of the other cards in terms of fortune cards, so I get it. They nerfed Spiky Bits to make it so it, oh, Jesus. So it does less less melee damage and it gives you less damage resistance and they went ahead and they changed true grit the healing you get is increased to 10 health rather than 8 so it's actually a little bit of a buff 
Another thing they changed, she was heavy hitter. And I made a whole video about heavy hitter a while ago. And what heavy hitter used to be able to do, you know, I'll show it to you. I'll just go ahead and go and do a game. And speaking of going into the games, one of the things they changed was this used to say solo campaign. Now it says training to help signify that you aren't getting anything out of it, basically. <laughs> But now, yeah, let's go ahead and go into a match here and show you what I'm talking about, what they changed with Heavy Hitter. Oh, by the way, Bad Seeds. They did change something with Bad Seeds, this map. If you recall, this is the map where you got to go around a farm area and beat a bunch of nodes to the ground. And then a wave spawns. And then you go to the next one, another wave spawns. You go to the next one, another wave spawns. Well, now there's going to be endless hordes <laughs> in the middle of your nightmare runs on Bad Seeds. Once you start clearing out these nodes, maybe after you defeat the final node, it is endless hordes. Great. <laughs> so that's another thing they changed. It made Nightmare much harder with this patch. Anyway, let's talk about Heavy Hitter. So this actually worked out pretty well because my corruption cards here spawned with Volatile. So let me show you what's going on. If you recall, with Heavy Hitter, before what you could do is just punch a Ridden and they would die. Basically, no matter what. It doesn't do that anymore. So you come here and I'll go punch the people in the head. And they're fine. They do not die. But now that does not mean that Heavy Hitter is not an extremely valuable card. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit here. If you were using Heavy Hitter just to kill stuff outright like this, frankly, you were using it wrong to begin with. <laughs> when I made that video talking about how strong punching was with Heavy Hitter, I knew it was not going to last because it just wasn't intended to be that way. However, like I mentioned, that does not mean that Heavy Hitter has lost its value. You just have to use it the correct way now. And Heavy Hitter is an extremely powerful card for this reason here. And I'm gonna make a whole video about this, but this, in my opinion, is going to be how people deal with Nightmare. And it is all about crowd control and stumble. Each creature has stumble HP. And if you take a look here on staddy.net, I'll have the link in the description, you can see how much stumble HP each one of these creatures has. So 30 stumble HP, 30, some of them have a lot of stumble HP, some of them have a little bit, and then based off of whether or not you hit their weak shot, it will amplify how much stumble damage you do. Something to keep in mind is if you're on Nightmare, Ridden only takes 60% of the usual stumble damage. <laughs> so that's also something to keep in mind. One of the rumors I heard is that you can't stumble things on Nightmare anymore, and I'm like, no, that's wrong. You definitely still can. But this is, in my opinion, where the meta is going to be. And again, I'm going to make a whole video about this, but if you're having trouble, learn how to stumble things. Heavy Hitter is still going to be a big part of that, and I still recommend using it. But also consider how some of your other weapons here will be able to stumble things. Because each weapon has its own stumble value, which you can see on all of these here. And this, some of these will change based off of the rarity of the weapon, so make sure you take a look at that. But basically how it works is you do a certain amount of damage and then you run it through the stumble multiplier. And if you break through the stumble HP that the creature has, they will become stumbled. So you can still one shot stumble things with something like the Barret, especially if you run stumble attachments. I sincerely think that stumbling is going to be the meta to make it so people can slow play through Nightmare. And I will make a video about it to teach you how to do that. But for now, I'm just letting you know about it. Let's continue on with the patch here. They also made other changes to the melee weapons, and we'll talk more about some of the stumble things in a different video, but one of the things they changed is that the bat does less stumble damage than it did before. So does the fire axe, and so does the hatchet. They also changed the damage of the fire axe. It used to do 85 when it was a gray variant, and I believe it now does 70. Sure enough, it does 70, so they made it weaker. And I'm not sure how that multiplies out through all the other variants, if it still goes up by 30% per level like it did before, but... The new base on a gray axe is 70 rather than 85. I believe the hatchet was 50, and I think it's 40 now. Yep, sure enough. So they just weakened both of these weapons pretty substantially. And let's talk about why people are so upset about this. So we can kind of all come together and understand what's going on. My opinion, based off of playing many of these games and seeing patches that do great things for communities and not so great things for communities, is... Regardless of whether or not this was warranted, changing the values on the melee weapons, nerfing them all, nerfing everything about them. <laughs> Even if you look at the game from a logical perspective and you go, wow, melee weapons are overperforming by a ton. These are, these are affecting the game in an extreme way. It's making it so that based off of our data that we have, the game is not being played in a way that it was designed. Right? And we'll talk more about that later. But if you go ahead and you logically feel like this makes sense to nerf it, and then you nerf it, 
people are going to be upset even if it makes sense. Reason being is it is very, very human to go ahead and be upset when you have something and it is taken away from you. It is the same idea where if you tell somebody that you might end up doing something and then you don't do it. People just get disappointed because they get expectations built around what's already there. And if you take it from them, they're going to be mad. That is just how it works. In my opinion, that's part of the reason why power creep starts to show up in some games because developers don't want to take things away from their player base and upset them. <laughs> this is an example of upsetting your player base because you took things from them. Not all players were really, really great with melee, so they were just getting by with what they could figure out, and now it's hard on them again. And again, regardless, you're just going to upset people if you take it from them. So if you see somebody who's being upset about the melee stuff, you know, it's 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 a it's a very normal human thing. So maybe try to, you know, take it easy on them if you feel like they're being a crybaby. And if somebody tries to go ahead and tell you, well, you know, it kind of makes sense why they would do these things. These things were overperforming. If you're someone who's upset, maybe try to hear their point of view as well. Because we're all just trying to have fun here, right? So let's just try, let's try to see it from both sides. I guarantee you, and, and by the way, I want I guess I should address this now. I guarantee you there's not a single dang person at Turtle Rock who's trying to manipulate the game to make it so it's harder so that it has more value or so that you buy certain things from their store or that you pay more money no it's no <laughs> they're just trying to make the game good for you and they're trying their best based off of what's going on at their studio all the different things that they're trying to account for all at the same time trying to make sure they push updates out as quick as they can but still having to deal with qa stuff from sony and xbox Everybody's trying their best right now, okay? <laughs> so, let's just try to bring that in a little bit here. And then, in terms of the melee stuff, I will go over more videos how to really get the most out of things now that things have changed. Now, let's talk about some of the things that I don't think were intended that happened with this patch. One of which is the trauma damage. So, I'm going to let these things hit me. And I think what's currently happening is people are taking a ton of trauma damage. Like, look at this. I got hit three times and my trauma is just getting absolutely obliterated. I don't think this is intended. In fact, I can almost guarantee you it was already confirmed that it's a bug. But you can see after a couple of smucks there, I'm already down to 55 max total health. And I think I started at 110. This is not intended. They are going to fix it. The reality of it is that it's here right now, and I have no idea how long it's going to take for them to fix it. But it's a bug, and the trauma damage is just way more tra traumatic than it used to be. Another thing that is going on... I would say that maybe Doc is your best bet at trying to mitigate some of that and maybe trauma resistance. But frankly, if it's bugged, things aren't behaving the way they're supposed to anyway. So my best advice is really, really learn to not get hit by getting good with your punching. Because if you can avoid things from touching you, well, then you won't get trauma damage. So your best bet is to become really aware of where things come from. Make sure you look around and just don't get hit. <laughs> I know that's not, gr that's not really... The most fun advice to hear for now, but the best thing you can do for now is really just get in tune with hearing where creatures come from so they don't sneak up on you, learning where they come from, and then punching them if they do get too close. And then listening is the best way to know if they're right on you. So, like, listen and then flick and punch and get them off you, and then you can finish up. That's what I would do. And actually, on the topic of trauma damage, watch them hurt me for a lot of trauma again here. Something you used to be able to do, which they changed with this patch because they said it was a bug, was if you had temporary health on, like if I put these pills on, that would make it so that I would not take trauma damage if I took damage that was within the temporary health. It basically blocked all trauma damage, which was tremendous, tremendous for melee builds since they have to frontline a lot of things. But now let me go ahead and throw some temporary health on so you can see how I still take trauma damage. So you see how it says 90? It should still go down if I take damage while I have temp health on. But it looks like it still does a pretty good job of blocking it. Like, I'm sitting here not really seeing any damage being taken right now. So it must have to be a substantial amount. Maybe from, like, a crusher or something. And something that's really interesting, now that I'm looking at it, is it must be something with the common. Because look at how I didn't take any trauma damage from that guy just now. But whenever I get hit by a ridden or a common, I take a ton. So there must be something going on there, specifically with the common. So my advice would still be try to have temporary health on to try to block some of this trauma. It's apparently not as good at it as it was before, <laughs> but it still helps. 
Rikers also apparently used to be able to be slowed down while they were charging if you shot them. I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't realize that was a thing. You could still stumble them, though, so don't worry. That's how I would always stop them, is I would just straight up stumble them. But apparently, they used to slow down when you would shoot them before. I didn't realize that. Never even knew it was a thing. <laughs> Another thing they changed here was for Jimmy. And Jim gets extra damage whenever he kills a ridden with a precision kill. Stacking up to 10 times so he can get 25% extra damage. But if he takes damage, he loses all his stacks. Well, before, if you took friendly fire, you would lose your stacks. Now they made it so if you take friendly fire, you don't lose your stacks anymore. Another thing that changed is movement is a little bit different. And a lot of the speedrunners are really noticing this. I don't notice it quite as bad as I think people who are really into speed, right? But there's definitely some things that feel a little, uh, I feel a little goofy, yeah. It gets more dramatic when you use speed cards, but some folks are mentioning that uh, yeah, there's like an acceleration that makes it so your movements don't feel as precise as they did before. Um, again, I really feel like if you're a speedrunner, this is something that you notice a lot more than if you aren't. I think if you never really engage in that style of gameplay, you don't really have to worry about it that much. But I do notice it from time to time, like when I try to move and then suddenly I'm climbing on stuff or I go farther than I thought I was going to or my stamina doesn't quite do what I thought it was going to before. It just feels a little different. I think it's one of those things where once you get used to it again, you're not really going to notice it anymore. But if you're a speedrunner, you're probably quite a bit more sensitive to it than the average player. Another thing they changed here was this bad boy, the breaker. Pretty much they made it. The, 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 I can give you the numbers, but the main thing they changed about the breaker was that his weak spots don't hurt him as much as they used to. So if you hit him in these little ouchy areas, you used to get a lot more bonus damage when you actually break one of those spots. So let me try to break one. You'll see it happen. Get over here, buddy. So if I break this here, you'll see that he takes a little bit of extra damage, but that number is just a much smaller number than it used to be. He's not as vulnerable when you break his weak spots like he was before. The ogre got a similar treatment because the ogre has that big belly button, right? Well, now if you break the ogre's belly button, it doesn't hurt as bad. Another thing that changed here with the breaker is I believe this swarm closes in faster than it used to. I believe it said it used to take 90 seconds, and now it only takes 75 for it to reach, what, presumably minimum distance. So pretty much what they did was just buff the crap out of the breaker, because they must have felt like he wasn't big enough of a challenge. And I guess they wanted to buff the ogre, too. Is there more creatures over here? And typically, when you break a weak spot on one of these creatures beforehand, you would do about 2,000 damage typically on one of them it depends on the creature but usually you get about 2,000 bonus damage and these creatures had about 24,000 health on nightmare i think at least the monstrous version did and now the belly button on the ogre only deals like 500 bonus damage when you break it and instead of doing about 2,000 bonus damage on the breaker you're only getting about 1,000 bonus damage so they pretty much cut it in half the effectiveness of taking out the weak spots now that being said if you hit the weak spots you are still doing a ton of bonus damage to the total HP of the creature. So that's still a really big deal. It's just that you don't get as much bonus damage when you break the spot. Another change here that I think is going to upset people because it's on the same vein of taking something away is I'm on Barroom Blitz right now and I have my razor wire. So that's what a lot of people like to do. They bring their razor wire or whatever items they're going to bring and they drop it down and they make it so that you can load up that whole barroom area and watch the ridden just get stuck. However, you can't do that anymore because it teleports back to you. They did this in a few areas of the game. This is one of them. Another one is the Abomination in Act 4. You can't drop things down off that ledge anymore. Everything just kind of comes right back to you. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if people immediately just start doing a thing where they toss things down to each other. So I could be standing up here, tossing things down, and somebody's catching it. And some other changes here include that all cleaners are now available. No matter what, at the beginning of the game, you don't have to unlock them by completing the first four levels of the game. Also, if you complete a campaign chapter, it'll unlock all previous chapters, which is extremely interesting to me. <laughs> Can't believe they're doing that now. Makes it so that when we're doing nightmare runs on stream, you can unlock a ton of stuff. I wonder if this means if you just do act four with somebody, if you just beat the whole game. I wonder how that works. And then a couple other things that they did. Include that they adjusted supply points on certain runs. I think they did that to make it so people don't just farm a certain level over and over again. And some people might be like, well, why would they change that? Why would they change farming? Because the, the reason for that is that 
the level becomes a farm level so that people who are genuinely playing the level run into farmers and that makes a bad experience for them. That is what I assume they would be changing it for. And then if you guys want to see the patch notes, go ahead and take a look at everything here because there's a lot more going on than what I'm talking about here. This would take a long time. There's a lot of stuff going on with the PvP. So you can go ahead and take a look at the link. They also have a link to their Trello so you can see what they're currently working on. But one last thing at the bottom here, which is kind of fun, is that they made it so that you can name a Ridden while you're watching a Twitch streamer. So you pay, I think, what, 10 bits, and it makes it so you can become one of the special Ridden, which is kind of funny. <laughs> I tried it out. It's okay. I think they're going to really expand on this feature. But for now, you can have your name show up on the screen whenever your streamer takes out a special Ridden. So there's a lot that happened in the patch here. And I think... A lot of folks are just a little shell-shocked that there were things that were nerfs and everybody's just trying to get used to it. Like I said, I'm going to have videos coming out on how to deal with some of the changes because I do think they're, they're definitely something that you can deal with. I just think that we just need to open up different styles of play and I think I'm going to try to do what I can to help with that. And you can look forward to those next coming days. We do do viewer games every single night on... We also do viewer games almost every single night on twitch.tv slash swingpoint. Links in the description. I'll be playing there tonight if you guys want to hang out, talk about the game, talk about what you know, see if you can learn a thing or two about how to deal with the new nightmare. And with that, thank you guys so much for being here. Please consider subscribing if these videos have been helpful to you, and I will see you in the next video that we do around here.